is that still spoken word? But it's whatever for me. So yeah, it's, I guess that's one of the hardest things to find your own personal rhythm. Like yeah, that that's personal. Hard. That's I don't hard. know if it's like a personal vibration or like of how in tune you are with yourself and everything around you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's like in the universe or something like that. But uh, uh, for you guys, how did you start getting into this path of uh, doing, you know, spoken word and poetry and stuff? For me, uh, it started with watching Deaf Poetry Jam. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really random. I was just on YouTube, and then I, I found a video, and then I watched that, and, and then I couldn't stop, and I kept watching it and watching it. And um, especially a lot of the female spoken word artists I could connect to. Mm-hmm. Like? Um, like Maya, Maya uh, Del Valle, um, Sonia Sanchez, um, Ish Lady Park. Um, and I was like, I have similar stories like they do. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had a voice that people might want to hear, um, my stories that they want to hear. And um, I started writing. And I still remember the first poem I wrote. It was, I was super angry <laughs> about foreigners in Korea. About the way, um, so I kind of put together their stereotypes of Korean women and right. how I struggle with my own identity. Um, and it was back when we had a spoken word event, pretty big event called Word Food, back like three years ago. Um, and I did it, I just went on stage and I performed it, and then I rushed down, and then I just left, the, like, it just ran away from the venue. Because it, it's one of, it's a, such a really, for example, if you are a person who can play music mm-hmm. and then draw and then do poetry and then do acting and stuff, they each have their own, you know, levels of uh, expression and stuff. Mm-hmm. There but there's go. that one thing that's just like, yeah, I can act in front of like 500 people, it doesn't matter, but if I sing, man, I can't even do it. Like, you get mm-hmm. choked up mm-hmm. and like you literally feel the choking of your throat mm-hmm. or something and mm-hmm. it's really hard to express it. If you could really, truly do that one facet of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, finally, that you can totally, you know, open up to your, to a new dimension of, you know, to your personality that people w- wouldn't even realize at that part, like, oh shit, you, you sing? Yeah, I sing, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> and, and not only that, but in the ways that we express ourselves, it brings out certain parts of our personality. Oh. So for mm-hmm. Chloe, mm-hmm. you know, I used to always ask Chloe, I was like, man, you always be writing something serious and deep and, you know what I'm saying, it always has like so much. You know, I just gotta really think and kinda hurts my brain a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going through emotions and stuff, you know? <laughs> and I was like, You ain't got no happy poems and it's right. but even for me, the type of stuff that I wanna write, I don't necessarily it doesn't always come out in poetry. It might come out in radio or in music or mm-hmm. every expression brings out a different piece of my personality. And you're surprised by it, too. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to write happy poems. I want to write about <laughs> birds and songs and but flowers. If, but If you do something like that, for example, you say, I want to do this particular thing, mm-hmm. do you find that much more harder to do it because you actually... Sometimes you need that discipline, though. Sometimes you need borders. <sighs> Sometimes you need that, you it's know, hard. let me try to do this. Because it is a challenge for yourself, too, right? right? When, you, when you kind of do that stuff. Because if you are conscious that, like, Man, I'm doing a lot of morose or dark things and stuff. They're like, it's time to do the complete opposite. Because when you actually do the complete opposite, then it shows that your, you know, the polarization of your expression of dark to bright, you know, it can actually show how, you know, how deep and how far you can go and stuff. So uh, for you guys, you know, when you're actually making things or you're actually, you know, beginning a, a new verse or a new, you know, uh, type of performance, how does that usually come to you guys? Is it just very random or is there, what is the, basically what is the process? What is the development for that, for those kind of things? For me, um, random lines just pop into my head. And I is it a random it line? It's a random line for me. Oh, for me okay. it's a verse and Neither. I write it down. Me too. And so, for example, with those random lines, is it like the starting line or is it just any line that could be inside it? Any line and then um, I just write down on my notepad first and mm-hmm. then I go back to it and I try to explore what made me think of that line and what I can express from that and I really delve into that and I start writing from mm-hmm. that. Same thing for me. I mean, I don't know and this is bad, but <laughs> 
I don't know what I'm talking about half the time until I actually do it. Like, as I'm writing, I try to figure out, okay, well, what is this about? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm discovering the story, but I feel like I'm seeing, like, um, I've written about all different types of stuff from the domestic violence to um, uh, breakups to situations, but I'm kind of, it's weird. It's almost like I can see the story unfolding. Like, I see the stories and the characters kind of playing out. And so I'm just writing it, writing it as I imagine it. Mm -hmm. So if it sounds realistic, it's because in my brain, like that's, I'm not trying to do it. Whereas when you, uh, when you become a disciplined artist mm -hmm. and not just a free spirited artist and you actually assign yourself something, that's difficult because you have to actually, okay, I'd like to write about this and I'd like to, you know, <laughs> I recently, I recently did a song with a friend of mine and yeah. um, we said, we want to do a song about our parents. Want to do a song paying honor to our parents and uh, it was hard when I first started because it's like everything I was coming up with was just so corny like right. I didn't even know how to start like right. uh, my that dad was raised here and I, my mom was and I was like I don't even know what or to Western Philadelphia <laughs> yeah, it just seemed, <laughs> like, how do I even how do I even approach that without sounding just like really mm -hmm. but I actually found a beat mm -hmm. and was able to tell the story in a way that I didn't think was was corny but it is a, a lot uh, it's very difficult yeah. for me to think of the topic first mm -hmm. it's easier to start with the line and then ask myself what drew myself from the line and what's the story in that line mm -hmm. well, that's actually an interesting thing point that you actually said too is that you found a beat right because mm -hmm. usually when you're doing like a spoken word thing for myself like uh, as a person just any person who would look at that very superficially they just hear a performance mm -hmm. and they hear the words coming out of that but I guess on the other side, they may not r realize or notice that there is a particular beat that the person is going on. Mm. That, like you mentioned before, the one guy's like going to da -da, like Captain yeah. Kirk style, mm. you know. And then afterwards, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you know, at first, like, oh, it's just the style. But I guess it's um, a beat that no one else is really hearing more distinct as the person who's kind of saying it. I guess, right. That's true, and it's in, like it's the rhythm what we talked about, like the mm -hmm. rhythm in your who you are, finding your own rhythm. Do do you always find yourself doing the same type of rhythm all the time? No, uh -uh. no, not not at all. I think it's um, I love when stuff almost is really um, just all over the place because mm -hmm. I just feel like it's it's more dynamic. Like I think of the the Saul Williams piece that we played um, where he was talking oh. about the moon. Yeah. And can let people just, know about um, that? The, the soul. Um, um, that's, that's he's yeah. you know there's a, there's structure, but you know what I mean. It's good to be dynamic mm. and to, and have a lot of different things going on. Whether that means you're going to make sounds, or start beatboxing in the middle, or start singing, um, because I think that's how life is. I don't think life is like just one. Yeah. So I think I think if. It's kind of damaging if you only have that. Even with music I listen to, if I realize like, hey, I've been listening to the same artist, but they do the same thing every album. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm happy that they've stayed true to their roots, but I kind of want them to grow a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. switch it up, you know what I mean? Surprise me. Especially because you grew with that person too, you know? Yeah. So you actually expect something more. Yeah, and you know it's, and you know it's in there. Mm -hmm. So we have to stretch ourselves to do things that are different. I mean, even, you know, with music, sometimes I do stuff that I think, well, this might suck, but... I'm trying to suck to succeed. Now, I don't... Wait a second. That doesn't sound right. Okay. What I'm saying is that um, you have to... You know, failing forward? I don't know. You can't, you, can't, <laughs> you, can't, you, can't be, you can't be good at anything. You have to start somewhere. And I feel like with Elliot, ever since he started recording and started doing more rap, he's definitely know how to like play up with the rhythm and really kind of... Um, he's become more versatile with his rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I try to do that. I think... For me, rhythm is very much influenced by who I'm listening to at that time. Um, if I'm listening to a lot of music, or if I'm listening to a lot of poetry, if I'm listening, um, if I'm just reading, it. sometimes I try to create my own rhythm. Um, also, sometimes the mm -hmm. poem kind of structures itself. Um, but rhythm is huge in spoken word. If you see spoken word artists perform, you can you can catch it. Mm. Yeah. So then, uh, I guess now, like you can really hear the distinction of each performer that usually goes to wordsmiths or anything like that you can actually that's their style like you can hear it like for sure it's like sometimes when i hear like a, a comedian's joke and if someone says i'm like that's totally his joke or something you know like no one else can really do it like that yeah. guy or that girl or something like that hmm, okay that's very cool so uh 
in this point, let's just talk about wordsmiths for a bit. Like, how did this all come about to the point where you guys are now? <laughs> Whoa, it's like crazy. I'm gonna try to tell it in the quickest way possible. What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm sorry. Um, yo, um, I wanted to do videos. Like, I was thinking, man, I need to make a video, mm -hmm. and I wanted to make a video for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. I always say that wrong. Um, and there was this, there was a song by Andre. Wait a second, it was the Outcast or just Andre 3000? I think it was just, it was on his solo joint. Mm -hmm. Happy Valentine's Day, every day is the 14th. <laughs> you know that joint? you know if it's true. No, that's, uh, <laughs> you, you really killed the mood. Like, we, we had something and then you killed it. I just turned, Personally. I just turned a wider shade of pale. <laughs> <sighs> so, anyway, uh, that song made me want to do a video, and I was just going to get a bunch of my friends together and do a video about that, like just a bunch of like people I knew just dancing and kind of talking about, you know, Valentine's Day. And then I was like, you know what? It would be better if I did like the topic of love for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So then I got, I was like, let me get four artists together. So I think originally I got uh, my friend Pinnacle the Hustler, mm -hmm. uh, who I now do the radio show with. I got uh, Chris Illumin, uh, who's known as Black Illumin, his performance name. All right. Uh, Karis Jones, or Charismatic Jones, mm -hmm. um, and Muko, um, who was not not here anymore. But I got those four people together, and I basically said, "Yo, you have a minute to express yourself on this topic." Mm -hmm. And so after I did the first video of putting these people together and letting them express themselves for a minute, I continued to do that, and I did it for I don't know. I think we did about eight episodes. I'm still working on a few more, but I'm doing less of that. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, you know, me and Chloe were talking about turn this into an event because um i was in china last year and came back and i couldn't find any spoken word events anymore and um and he was doing the videos and i kept i kept pestering him because he's a really talented host like he he gets in his groove i don't know what he just changes. Your rhythm. yeah he changes <laughs> and when he has the mic he's just he's a natural and i kept pestering him for months mm -hmm. And he finally did the first Wordsmiths event last November, mm -hmm. and it was a huge success. It was at the Laughing Tree Lab, and um, people kept pouring in. Like we didn't have seats for them, and yeah, that was uh, really cool. But you had people dope. standing up, people Oof. on the ground. The energy was great. People didn't want to leave. You can tell, like, if people want to leave your event, exactly. Or after the are, even after the event's over, I mean, people yeah, still people just hanging out, out right. chilling because they like the kind of ambiance. They like camaraderie. You, what you've created, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, I mean, that's the biggest thing for us. So, we did the first event back uh, over a year ago. So, we've been kind of been rocking for a year, but we did the first event, but then we didn't have a venue. Mm -hmm. Laughing Tree was going to go through some changes, so we needed a different venue. So, it's like, dang. So, I was like, Chloe, like, as soon as you find me a venue, as soon as you find okay. me a venue, right. we'll make it happen again. And so, it took some months. It wasn't until what? It wasn't until February. February, April, February, March that she was like, okay, on a venue. I think we right. got a venue, we can push on. Right. So. And th this is what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then, so then it was like, well, how do we, uh, how do we divide responsibility or who's doing what? And I'm like, yo, I'm, I got my playful other stuff. Like, I want to come in, I want to like host, and I want to like kind of shape Dance. what's going on. Shake. <laughs> and so I was like, you know. So how do how do we do this? And so Chloe, I don't even like, yeah, I don't even really know what we do, but it works. It works. And people turn out. We have performers, <laughs> and people have a good time. And one thing I really like is I do invite my personal friends to come. Sure. I course, want them yeah. to see that side of me. And usually, your friends they they've never seen you do right before exactly. Before. And um, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I invite uh, friends that are writers. Mm -hmm. And at first they're like, oh, I'll just come and sit down and watch you, and, you know, clap for you. And then a couple, and then couple the months after, they're like, oh, I want to I wanna perform. Like a couple oh, that months is, later. That is one of the coolest things yeah. when people come and, uh, you know, maybe they already have some type of gifting or ability. Yeah. But they realize like, yo, next time, next time, I'm going to do something. Right. I'm and gonna they something. really do. Yeah. Like you can see them getting inspired, you know, right. by watching the other yeah. people. And... What I love is everyone has a different sort of favorite. Someone's like, yo, I like the guy that speaks in Russian. Mm -hmm. Or I like the guy that tells nonsensical like lines, you know. Um, or I like the, the girl that sang. 
Mm-hmm. So everyone's coming there for something completely different. And I feel like when people ask me, like, what type of performances, this is funny because people, they want to come <laughs> and they want to share their art. Absolutely. So they're like, yeah. so, like, what sort of thing can I do? And I'm like, dog, mm. we got everything from, yeah. like, you can do pretty much Good anything. People like, wearing masks <laughs> on Just open stage. up your jacket. Just like, you know, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's like I said. You, you know, we we have uh, Cho In Ho. Like, okay, yeah. he wears a mask and he's uh, speaking in Korean and he has politically driven messages. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes he'll have friends that will come and give a context to what is he talking yeah. about. As but even without thing. knowing, yeah. um, even without knowing what he's mm-hmm. saying, you f- mm-hmm. feel the power and it's a performance. He's dressed in this like, janitor-like costume and he's got this mask on. And gas then, mask. Gas mask, and then you got Charlie. Uh, Charles doing uh, Charles his he's doing spoken a... word piece and he was freaking amazing because he's a very <laughs> chill dude like he loves our events and he's so chill he's just like uh huh <laughs> he's like that and then on stage he was like a madman he was one of my favorite um, then you, most memorable then you got music I mean you get you got Prime Minister of Sound bouncing all around the stage you got CJ's Infinite sitting down doing his sitting thing sitting down rapping um, you, you, you got Charismatic Jones coming through she could be playing back up for she somebody mm-hmm. or she could be you know actually performing her own work um, Abby comes and brings a loop pedal um, I can't say that there is like the same performers each and every single time and that to me is kind of good right. because it means that each and every show has something different mm-hmm. last show uh, we had uh, Jess uh, Jess Crawl. And he was doing like slam poetry because he's done that back in the state. So he was doing the type of poetry that like I really like to see. Like that's the pocket of stuff. And he was like, "Yo, I need to need a mic." <laughs> that's was, awesome. Which threw it off for everyone else because everyone else was like, "Yo, should I use a mic?" You know what I mean? He didn't use a mic and he just commanded the stage and just captured everybody's attention. But um, I love the diversity and what we're what we're drawing out. And the, the, to bring it back to what we were saying earlier, we just felt like there wasn't a home. When we first got, when at least when I was performing, you know, uh, you know, shout out to shout out to Venus uh, for doing yeah, for doing work. Thank you so much. And really having that community. When that community was set up, it was dope. I used to go and just listen. Oh. Like I, I went and I listened so way before I performed. I was listening to Lauren perform. Uh, shout out to Lauren. Jeremy Toombs, Jeremy uh, Love Day, Marcus, Aurelius Marcus. Higgs, uh, <laughs> Charlene. I remember just listening to, uh, yeah. Tunes, man. Um, <laughs> sit, like just listening to these people and how they did stuff, and it inspired me to do the stuff that I'm doing now. But it happened, you know, even years later. Right. But we realized that was the hive. That was 2009, 2008. Yeah, 2008, 2009. And we were like, you know, she comes back from China, and I realized like there's not really much going on for spoken word. Comedy's got a great home with stand up soul. Mm-hmm. You know, Albert and, uh, wait a second, I'm forgetting all the names now. I'm about to Rudy and we got Albert Jeff Sinclair. Albert and Rudy. Yeah, Jeff Sinclair or whatever, organizing and helping everything go on. Amazing performers, by the way. Right. Um, the whole community, Dan- Daniel Kennedy, everyone's doing a great job. I'm, I'm missing people now. People are going to be mad at me. All right, stop. So. Anyway. Yeah. You know who you are. <laughs> you know behind. who you are. Okay. <laughs> Adam. Dare you people. Um, but that was an established community. Uh, yeah. Stand up soul. And then for and then for hip hop community, um, there there's a lot of shows. There's a lot of regular shows going on. And each community has a different vibe. And I Absolutely. love the vibe. Yeah. I'm a bit, I'm super biased. I love the spoken word community. Brian Aylward, sorry, since you kind of started things, yes. I just want to shout you out. I love the, the atmosphere of spoken word approach. I don't know if it's because people are so honest on stage, and they're so free with their expression that they sometimes they just rant, you know, mm-hmm. and and they're super honest. And after their performance, you feel like you kind of connect to them in like a really super intimate way. Right. I remember the, the first time I saw um, Heather perform. We did a word food event in Itaewon at I don't even remember. It was like some type of restaurant. We never did there ever uh, again. V- Vino, yeah, the wine place. Vino, yeah, yeah at, the, at Vino, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, you know. The way she was performing, it was like, I was like, I don't know. It's almost like you're reading through somebody's emails or you're like, you're like looking in on someone's private life. You're like, I don't know that I should know all this about your life and your last relationship, but 
I feel like I know you. I and know I connect you. with your yeah, story. Exactly. Right. But you do feel, you know, people are really opening up and talking about stuff that they've never talked about. Maybe poetry or the stage is the only way that they can talk about these things. Right. It's the only place where they feel comfortable addressing these things, whether it be like terrible stuff from their past or just frustration. Mm-hmm. But I, I love the the the, the breakup. <laughs> the breakup poems or like Stop I love laughing. <laughs> you're like laughing about it. like no seriously like the, the I love my like the woman like I love myself even if a man can't love me like that's dope you know or you know I realize that you can never love me as much as I love me and I just got like I love expect, not just women but I, I love when like women share that because you get to see as a man I don't really know what's going on in like in a woman's mind and how they think but on stage like I wish more men would open up. I feel like actually women are very honest about their feelings and their emotions. I haven't seen a, a guy really go in like that, How? except for oh, I love my woman. Like other than that, like they don't do or, anything. Or Rich talking about how much. How, how team I rich. got all the bitches. I got all the hoes. I got hoes in this country. And I'm like what? <laughs> in this country, not even. I mean, he's anymore. sharing. He's being honest and in real. No. Um, oh, I don't know. Have I? Have I? Have I been? You 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 always talk about like you say you did a beautiful Valentine's women one, so. and like oh you you know like I guess I'm being more of like an idealistic type of expression, right? You're like talking and describing about a specific person you're looking for. Well, something? no, I think I've done I've done uh, my my poem Dearth. I don't perform. I don't normally perform Dearth, but Dearth is like a real poem but mm. it's not it's old English it's kind of written in an old English sort of way it's mm. like uh, I have no such diversions I have no such aberrations to follow folly has found me only in my mirth now a, to- a colder temperance settled upon me and I find no rest from it only in the clouds light when the day break do I find this I can't remember but um this like that was me really but even there, I have to do it in a language that is somewhat shielded because I don't feel like putting all my stuff out there. Like, right. But I did, you know, I did say how I felt, you know, mm-hmm. in that particular joint. I want to see if I can like remember part of it and actually do that because that's actually like cool. But that's it's very difficult to do that. It's easier for me to say mm-hmm. how I love a uh, like how I love a girl or, or admire how, her beauty yeah. or yeah, that's right. that's easier to talk about something fun and talk about something light. Um, Domestic, the domestic joint. I'm not. I'm connected to stuff like that, but it's not like it's happened to me, or not like I've been in that particular situation. So that may not be as personal. Maybe it is easier for me to talk about things that are around me mm-hmm. rather than things that are happening directly to me, because it is it is you know hard to stand on the stage and be that naked and be that bare. I think I do that more. In the music, right. than I do, and um, in I guess the spoken word. You know, it's really interesting that you guys brought up it. Like, I can really start to see um, the similarities similarities with comedy, but I can see like a huge differences as well. For example, um, the comedians is let's say ninety five percent male. Okay. Yeah. And Janet's gods was maybe a hundred percent. She was the last we one. We miss you, Janet. Yeah, we miss you, Janet. Much, much love. And the thing is, is like, um, like Chloe, like you mentioned before, when guys when they go up, it, you said you want to see more guys mm-hmm. express how they really feel mm-hmm. about love and women and just you know that form of truth. Uh, guys usually they talk about those things, but it's the tone is obviously completely different. It's, right. It feels a little bit sometimes a little bit exploited right. for the sake of um, getting that instant reaction yeah, of, yeah. of humor yeah. and stuff. And, you know, talking about what the crowd, when they watch it, they get inspired. Sometimes in comedy, you get, um, like, disinspired. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can I say it? Like, you're, you're watching... My man said disinspired. You, you, you're watching a performance, right? And you've never done comedy before. You're sitting in the front seat. You look at one guy, he's like, really intense and he's like I could do comedy you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it but when you disinspired when you, <laughs> that's what you yeah. this, this inspires my new word so they but you know like when that. someone sees like a like a poetry slam Copyright. or like a spoken word performance like I could do that you know it's like we like to think of it in a so positive different. way in a positive yeah, way yeah so then afterwards this new person comes over and stuff and I was like 
you did it, <laughs> you know, but uh, you got to keep working on it and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's really interesting that that whole different vibe and stuff. That, uh, just the atmosphere too, like you guys mentioned before, like it's so different. Like um, one of the most interesting things I've been feeling and realizing much more is uh, in the beginning, I still do sometimes, I focus too much on what I'm prepared to say. And then when I do it, I'm just telling them about it. Mm -hmm. But there's moments like you have to take a break and you have to kind of listen to the silence between people. Mm -hmm. Like listen to how they're reacting yeah. because you're having a conversation and that their response is laughing, you know. And if you, for example, you're saying a joke and you expected a, a, a funny you know, break at this part here, but it didn't happen is because you weren't really listening properly. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, talking about the rhythm stuff, I can totally get it now because um, Tom Rose, he performed uh, this past weekend and stuff. He's, I think he might be performing tonight, I'm not sure. But uh, watching him perform, you know, he's like a veteran comedian. He's done many things. You know, Stand Up Soul brought him here. Watching him do a performance after all the, you know, soul comedians came and they see like a professional person doing their thing, it's like day and night, you know. They're do he was the way how he was talking. I could hear it. I can almost hear him singing a joke. Like yeah. he's like, and then you got to do some of this. Like, how do you expect him to do, like fold? Uh, I don't know, like pillow blankets, and because the guy has no chin or something. And I'm like, what the hell? Like this guy's hilarious. It's just it was like his cadence. You know, he had this mm. cadence and this presence brought to him. Y you said something though that I think uh, dis inspired. Disinspired. Not, not disinspired. <laughs> okay, that was dope too. <laughs> but the fact that it, it really is like a conversation and yeah. you really have to be listening for those silent moments. Like, I think it's, um, I don't know, I'd be trying to make things too deep or poetic, but it, I guess it's like it, almost even between like two lovers, like the listening and the uh, the reaction and the, it's not necessarily words. Like, you have to be able to respect the moment and respect the space. Mm -hmm. And I know when I first started doing, when I first started performing, I would just read through something like super mm -hmm. fast and then go sit down yeah mm -hmm. like because I, I you know and then I realized I can actually take my time mm -hmm. and I can like look up and I can engage and I can see what people feel and I can stop for a moment and I can talk to people mm -hmm. you know I watched I hosted an event that Dia Frampton was at last night of The Voice right. and you know she was in the middle of singing a song and then she just stopped and like started saying something to somebody in the crowd then she went right back into singing the song, but it's like having that artistic um, license, if you will, to know that you can do that. Like you're you're the one with the microphone, you're the one on the stage. You own that. Take as much time as you want. Stretch out if you want to sit down, sit down. You want to stand up, stand up. Mm -hmm. You want to roll around the floor. I mean, you're on the stage. Own it. Make it yours, but also make sure that you are. Um, Connecting with the audience because if not, you're just having a, a monologue with yourself in your in your closet, and people just happen to be watching you. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, that's so important to really be paying attention uh, to what the audience is feeling because you could go a completely different direction, even in a poem. I mean, I think with comedy it's a little bit different because like you could get a heckler, and then that heckler situation could turn into like a good moment. Have you guys ever had hecklers at all or anything? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really. <laughs> You're talking about. Should we? Should we <laughs> that's up to you guys. Okay. I asked the question. Um, you can say what you did. We, you just we had our first it. heckler. Yes. That means you made the big time. Yeah. No, no. But um, we do have um, I mean, me included. We do have people who write political poems. Okay. And um, there was this one man. I do not know his name. He's from New York. He's from New York. I think I have an idea who it is. Right. Okay. And he he was uh, <laughs> talk about it after. <laughs> It was talking about the Korean War and how um, America basically mm -hmm. was created it, and um, and his poem. He just went on about the tragedy of the Korean War, and there was this one guy. Was that a guy? It was a friend of my friend. Uh, he was loud. Too. And um, he is a poli sci major, and he's an, he's American, and he feels very strongly about a certain about p certain people saying certain things about America, I guess, mm -hmm. and. Um, it was, he was like really loudly and he was drunk too he was like boo you suck stop <laughs> like in the middle of his poem <laughs> he's like stop you're bad and then yeah, yeah. and wow. then, and then you know 
the thing is, we have a very quiet audience, and so everyone could hear him. But um, his girlfriend got so embarrassed that she run, ran out. Yeah. And, um, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> and it. and the funny thing is, <laughs> she he, ran out. Yeah, and he didn't even he didn't budge. He was just like like this, and then he's around. I was like, go chase after your girlfriend. He's like, no, I don't. I don't have to. And then she loves me. <laughs> She'll be back. I mean, I think he'd rather he would have rather have chased after her than hear the rest of the. Um, he had taken that complete political view before he gets his girlfriend, and he's like, "Okay, I got it, baby. Call me back. <laughs> I'm here." But but I, I love I love the realness of those moments. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, otherwise, every show is the same. Like you, know, you need way. some some yeah. different sort of things going on, but you have to be able to uh, figure out how to use the crowd. Mm. But that you know? that really shows that it does connect somehow. Like that's in a reaction because even in comedy, like. Uh, the worst reaction is no reaction when mm. everyone's completely mm. quiet. Yeah. But if you say a joke, like I have this joke about Gangnam Style, it's ridiculous. But uh, when I do it, even if someone, if everyone goes like, oh, like that's right. even better. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I could tell you go for that type of stuff. Like, <laughs> like, He's like, oh, that's what I want. Yeah. That's what and I was I'm going like, for. Good night, everybody. I'm done for today. <laughs> <laughs> just walk away and stuff. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's always uh, that reaction. And it, I, I, what is that about comedians, though? I feel like um, a lot of the comedians, especially the ones out here, yeah. they're like, if I can't be funny, let me at least offend a few people. And if I do that, I feel like I've done my job. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's like, um, I, I do it too, and it's not, uh, when I started comedy, I was already writing a lot, and mm. I don't know why I was writing, but I had writing. And uh, finally, I went up and I had, I had a, a, a bit of stuff. And uh, my first joke, it was terrible. It was terrible. So bad. <laughs> it was like, have you ever seen a vagina that looked like Big Jesus or Sloth from Goonies? And I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking about <laughs> and stuff? I'm like, and if you did, did you tell your girlfriend? And when your girlfriend wondered who is the, you know, who is that other girl? Because you're talking about two vaginas. And then you said to her, don't worry, yours is the one that looks like Baby Jesus. Because it makes miracles, and they're like, "What the fuck is this guy talking about?" And then I just going on and on. I'm like, I'm "Like, I wrote this for some reason, right? Like, this is here for a reason. Like, I don't know why I wrote this down, but sometimes, like you said, it's kind of like um, I've been thinking about this idea. If the internet was off, right? Like, just for some reason, some some guy he just turned off, he just fucked up. The inter- he just broke the internet. Yeah. It's it's no absolute way we can ever get back mm-hmm. to it but it still exists all around us mm-hmm. right so like all that time you know we're walking around in like all these like um invisible waves of um youtube clips or like porno and like wikipedia <laughs> and stuff just going through your head and stuff and sometimes somehow what if there is a way that you can kind of channel it just with thinking about it you know you get an idea from the air so it's like the inspirations that we get it's like what if there was like a internet before the internet mm-hmm. you know these it's like um like Carl Jung said about like the w- the synchronicity the web of consciousness of people share and stuff that all these ideas came before like it's already out there but it's kind of like we have to kind of um pick it out and it comes through us in a different way you know and that's where you find your own voice it's like we're talking about the same thing. Mm. We're talking about love, but did you ever think about love like this? Mm. You know, and then afterwards, people are like, "Oh shit, what channel was this guy on?" You know, like, where do, where do you get this stuff from? You know? I have the sudden urge to punch you in the chest. <laughs> Thank you. Just in the sternum area, right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh shit! That was live. No, we're we're oh. gonna take care of that bef- later on. Did, did that offend you or something? No, or I just something you said. I just wanted to. I don't know. I'm sorry. We'll be back after these messages, everybody. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So uh, next up, uh, what is the next? Po- next. <laughs> okay. The ne- what are the next performances Left you guys right. going on? Um, we have actually um, this month. Um, I'm sure you guys, if you've lived in Korea long enough, you know Pepe Day. Oh, sh- uh, November 11th. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's when Wordsmith is happening. That's the okay. November installment. Um, we usually just have it. Uh, second Sunday of every month, so that's an easy way to remember. Mm-hmm. Second Sunday of every month, come to work this. Yo, let's perform or something. Let's, let's do something. All right, you guys want to perform something? Yeah. Okay, it's gonna be on live, and we're gonna show it. Uh, let's see. We got some performances. Chloe, would you like to go first? Since it looks. Ellie, like- I think Elliot's ready. 
I I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, can you say some words or something? I'm trying to figure out what should I do. Should I do uh, time? Time. What's time? I have a piece about time. I was just saying time. Oh okay. Said, just say a number. <laughs> um. Okay. This is one that I always like to do. Okay. But I feel weird about it because I wrote it like in 2007, mm -hmm. and there's a line in it that I think could be perceived or probably is homophobic, but I feel like I've grown since that time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I always feel like, so, but the thing is, this is crazy. I've tried to like live edit it. It does not work because <laughs> there's a rhythm to it. Once you lose that rhythm and trying to be PC. So if you like, take out you that just, one, if you edit it, it doesn't sound the same anymore. So yeah. It needs that. Exactly. Well. It okay. needs that homophobic, you know, it needs that, that piece, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It just, anyway. Um, but what is it called? DC Movement. DC Movement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Elliot Ashby, DC Movement. Elliot Ashby, DC Movement. Back up, back up. Okay. Um, how's it go? No, no, stay in the, stay in the mix. Um, I like how, the, how poets do that, too. They step up to the mic, and they take a moment. The camera's right there, too. And then they look up, and then they perform, but they take that space. But they're normally trying to memorize their piece, make sure they got it. Yeah. Hurry up and get out so we can get in. I heard the whole... Ah, messed it up already. Okay. Hurry up and get out so we can get in. I heard the whole district can fit in. The urbanization and transportation makes every day feel like a trip to the airport. My fare card's short and I'm at the gates of court. 1-800-DC, do you have tech support? It's really much simpler than it presents itself. We traveling from different boroughs back to the commonwealth of V.A., where the streets are slow like the west parts of PA. This is an instant replay. I'm your instant DJ. Where the streets are slow like the west parts of PA. Ain't got no iPod and no iTunes, so I sing. Holding back these tears I felt so long. Holding my melodies is company on the single track. Ain't got no pack on my back, cause in the streets I keep it brief. And in the streets I be seeing so many spaced out and based out. It ain't a joke and it ain't funny. So many street dwellers asking me for money. But I'm an unpaid intern. My only papers, resumes, and business cards. At times I find it hard. But I put my strength and faith and trust in God. But if I was in the street, man, I'd be swerving. Because when I'm in the midst of people, I'd be doing a lot of social observing. I see some trapped in their own silence. Others listening to their own. I see some trapped in their own silence. Others rocking to their own drum. I feel like this is the book, book of Acts and all these diverse tongues. Spanish, German, Korean. Hangumao. All tied to this land of freedom, I be seeing Slavic looking faces from East Euro and golden complexions from East Africa. Whether it's E.T. or Eri, aside from that, I'm watching these men's eyes and think that some of them are fairies. And I'm allergic to the magic dust. Achoo! Movement on the escalator becomes an issue. They say, stay on the right, walk on the left, but it's all the same. We're all huddled and hurried up in this crazy game. Thousands of interns and young professionals, sophisticated individuals. We brew coffee as this everyday ritual for daily grind, this battle against time. For eating on the metro, I heard this little girl got fine. So I'm walking up the escalator and it's a constant climb and I'm steadily thinking that I can beat time. Oh, oh I'm tired. Yeah, nice. Shit. Yeah, time. <laughs> back. Yeah, it worked. It went back full circle. That's full amazing. Circle. Awesome. I feel like I should do that one. I was going to crack it. Oh, man, I can good. hear people clapping, too. That was good. Oh, you, you can hear? Cyber, so cyber clapping. That was good. Awesome. Chloe? All right. I know we went on about how spoken word is about performance, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have to leave this piece because of... <clears throat> no, we'll listen. We'll just we'll feel it. it. Yeah, feel it. Close your eyes. Um, the title of this poem is, If I told you that the God I believe in is not the God you believe in. The moon falls into the abyss of the sunrise on the canvas of a finger-painted sky. The earth flips through the pages of astrological stories, scientific theories pale like uncelebrated gray skies dispersed in a sea of space. Mathematically calculating, measuring what we can see when eventually the sea only sways to the wind's melody, or does it crash to create the most violent cacophony? Still, it never fails to rise to shore into a feeble fizzle, purging out the inconsistencies within the symphony of motion. You clasp your hands at this panorama, praying for your paranoia of the feeble needs of fizzling moments, forgetting that your heart pounds, and within you beats fierce yearning to live because we are but what our stomachs receive. 
This metaphor is life undone for greater visions, manifestation of the ultimate showdown when our bodies are strewn about an empty stage, devoid of melodies, of voice. By then, it'll be too late to realize that staccatos aren't quick enough to capture the speed of light and the bass pumping through the speakers need more volume to match the sound of lovers' heartbeats. Listen to the rhythm of life gasping for air every time you relive a moment that makes you believe you have another reason to live. When dreams fall through your grasp like sand, fling your fist to the sky and see the burning stars of frustrations of those who've confessed your darkest, and when you do, you'll hear that the echo is not man-made. Make your every breath the most complex and the simplest expression of gratitude. There is no latitude for coincidence. When you speak, you also breathe life. When you close your eyes, you lose yourself. When you wake to see another day, that's when you live this life. Learn to love because love breeds life. So wanting to love and to be love is a survival instinct, a rule of nature. Do not disobey it. Do not disrespect it. The circle of life is transient, always moving, never stopping, positively karmic. Mm. That was nice. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's crazy because when I hear a poem, and as a host, sometimes I'll call people back up and I'll say, can you read this part again? Because mm -hmm. mm. like, I think the audience needs to hear that one more time. Mm. If there's one thing I don't like about spoken word, it's that I get distracted in one or two lines or a certain part, and then I don't, <laughs> I'm not listening to the next yeah, 30 seconds. Stuck on that. Cause I'm just like, ooh, that was rich, you know? <laughs> and then I feel like I have ADD, and I wish like I could actually just like record. And that's why we do take videos and stuff, and we're gonna start putting stuff up. But um, that's a hard part for me, as I get stuck on one part, and I'm so in love with that one part mm -hmm. that I might miss the next 30 seconds mm -hmm. um, of a piece. And I definitely felt like that in parts of that side. So didn't get the full, but certain parts I was just like, ooh. And I, I make noise when I listen to the poems. And I'm, that's part of it, too, you know. You I, gotta, I want our audience to be a bit more vocal, feel too. And yeah. Not just, like, not just this, but, you know, like, you know, like, holler if you like it. I was raised in church, so, like, in the, in the church environment that I was raised in is Pentecostal, so it is pretty much where, you know, you're yelling back at the preacher or at whoever's talking. To, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell it like it is, you know. Oh. Or, or sometimes there's a grimace. Someone says something that's really true, and you're like, mm. Mm. like mm. you shake your head. <laughs> you, I mean, you should be actually nodding. I mean, but sometimes you do nod. You're like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's right. But other times you're just like, mm. you know. But there's different ex there's different expressions of how things hit you. Whether it's something that was a. a a terrible thing that happened, you're like, oh, that's terrible. That should never happen. Or someone says to something that's so true, it just resonates with you that you're just like, mm -hmm. you know. Me and my friends, I mean, I, I grew up in church, so like I was a, like I was like not going out. I was like in church, like Saturday night prayer service and stuff. So like 17, 18, 19, like around these years. But me and my friends, we'd all be sitting on the same pew um, in church. And if the pastor said something that really moved us, we would just stand up. We would just be standing up there looking at them like right. still like like I'm identifying with everything you're saying right now. Mm -hmm. And then if we if it really got good, we take we walk. Like we kinda like walk like just like be like, man, like this, like costume. you know, like <laughs> clap and like, yo, this like right now you this is the truth. Like right now, everything you're saying right now is, you know. But that's the type of expression that I'm used to. So I hope and I try to even foster more of that, you know. And that's why something dope that we do that we did not talk about, and I don't even know who's tuned in still or whatever. It doesn't matter. But something dope that we didn't talk about right. is we wanted to make this show unique by having a segment. I think we're calling it, what is it called now? Word on the Street. Okay. So we wanted to have a segment where it accomplishes two things. Crowd interaction, mm -hmm. which is really important. Absolutely. It, it's insane that you would have a bunch of people that have like interest come together and not meet each other. Just, okay, let's watch a show. Let's watch a performance. Nah, let's build community. Let's meet each other. There's there's girls, guys. I mean, maybe some relationships are formed. I don't know, you know. Um, but people should people should meet each other. So we know, number one, we need to make that community thing happen and so that people can encourage other people and things can build. 
Um, and that's not just because we want a big event, but we really do want to foster genuine relationships between people. Mm -hmm. And I've still got that pastoral thing in me, right? Um, and then the second thing is we wanted to highlight artists. Um, maybe you could speak more about right, that. Right, so basically one on the street, we um, picked two videos that we really liked. Um, it can be spoken word, it can be live music, it can be um, really anything uh, that includes words and visual art. And um, we've had, um, and the two videos, sometimes um, we connect them in a really special way. Last time we had um, Sarah Jones, uh, she's a spoken word artist back in the US. And we did, um, we had Gil Scott Heron's um, The Revolution, Revolution Will, Will Not Be, be Televised. televised. Mm -hmm. And she was inspired by that poem to write her <coughs> piece called Your Revolution. And she's talking about how um, women are viewed a certain way through media, and she um, basically, you know, talking against that. And um, and so we try to have some sort of connection between the two videos yeah. that we do feature. But um, we've had what um, live musicians that you wanted to, yeah. You know, sometimes uh. sometimes he's inspired by the video. Sometimes it's inspired by the music, sometimes it's inspired by It could by the be the lyrics, visual element, right. you know, but we want to basically show these things and then get people reacting to it. So if it's a topic, maybe it's a topic of cheating. Okay, what do you think? Do men cheat more or do women cheat more? And so and then we're actually having a discussion in the middle mm -hmm. because what happens far too many times is you come to a spoken word event and you listen to people pour out their feelings and their emotions and some of it's not really well organized. And then if you talk or you socialize, you know, that's like supposed to be a really bad thing. So shh, be quiet. Or da -da -da. Mm -hmm. But like, am I really supposed to sit in this room for three hours or two hours and listen to poem after poem after poem and like not talk to anybody? Like that makes no sense. Like how are you gonna have a social event that doesn't even allow people to properly socialize? Mm -hmm. So I was like, we need a break in the middle. We need to have people go ahead, prepare performances, and in the middle, we need to have some break where people can talk to each other, where people can engage with one another, mm -hmm. and then we can pick the show back up. Mm -hmm. But the other part of showing those videos is to provide a history and a context. Mm -hmm. Spoken word didn't come from just nowhere. Mm -hmm. There's people that we should know about. There's people that Chloe will tell me about. I'm like, I never, I've never heard of this person. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a bad host. Like I, I don't even know about this person. Who inspired this person that I like? Mm -hmm. So... Um, we want to basically expand people's knowledge and kind of bring, bring, we, and that's how we foster the spoken word part. Because we have comedians come through, we have hip hop artists that come through, we get a lot of different stuff, and we embrace all of that. You know, uh, Rudy's came and made people laugh and stuff like that. We embrace all that. I want those people to keep coming, but our primary focus is really to bring that home for spoken word, and so that's why we show those videos and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and stuff. So uh, it sounds like, you know, based on from what happened in the beginning, you know, to how you guys actually be continue the legacy mm -hmm. of, of Wordsmith, of what it is now, that it's um, still evolving to a new type of level, basically. You know, where especially with what you mentioned before about having that kind of crowd interaction, which is like kind of missing in all types of performances in a way. You know, it's it's like what, actually we, what we everything what we talked about. You know, it's uh it's like the art of conversation. It's the art of like true communicating with with people mm -hmm. and stuff that you you know you. It's it's a, it's really interesting. You know how you explain. You know when you go to church and you 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 feel so um, devoted or you feel the truth of what the pastor is saying that you actually literally move your body. Mm -hmm. uh, but some people, you know, like they really feel moved that they still contain it inside themselves, you know, that they'll, they'll just, sometimes they'll refuse to make an expression <laughs> on their face, <laughs> right? And it's crazy as it is. I mean, that's, I, I kind of relate to that when I watch a movie, you know, and sometimes <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that, you know, because like with a, with a movie, you know, they, they try to express some truth. It's like you have two hours mm -hmm. and they only take only the most important parts to condense this one specific truth. So when you see it, you're supposed to have some type of, uh, epiphany or like an alignment when you yeah. see this thing right but with spoken word like after your both of your performance and stuff it's actually much more shorter right so that kind of condensation of something like a really 
deep or really thought provoking or an interesting new perspective on a particular topic or scene or you know you're stacking these words together stack 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 and then boom it's this one feeling mm -hmm. all right and then like you said before i was doing the same thing i was like oh man and then it's like she's keep going like oh wait, I gotta catch up you know I gotta catch up, catch up. <laughs> and then I'm like checking my dictionary inside my own head and I'm like I know that word I heard that one word before so I gotta make sure I know what that is and so context stuff. clues can yeah, put it yeah, together exactly but the thing is is like it's it's even if you don't understand the words itself but um, it's the mystery of of all those words too because some words have a particular um, intonation, mm. you know, rhythm itself. Yeah. When you put those together, like, um, uh, for example, when w when I when you're when you're drawing or something, um, color is obviously is an important thing, and what's more important is, is light because light is the thing that brings everything into existence, mm -hmm. right? If there's no light, there's no form, there's no shape, there's nothing. Never like thought that. about that. Can you say what you said again? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> I like it. I, I just I want you to wow. repeat that. Um, okay, with with drawing, you know, um, color is important, but without light, nothing else exists because light brings form, light brings shape, and and light. the subject itself, right? So each piece that you see or each piece that you create has um, rules, mm -hmm. right? It has points. Yeah, and that's the only part of that door window that you can see and from that point on they have their own rules of light they have their own rules of color okay. for example in real life the more colors you put in together it turns white and when you when you draw and you put more colors you put in together it turns brown right so when you put all that stuff together there's going to be one piece and it's really moody it's like old dark greens like jade ivory green or something like that that is the reality of that one piece and mm -hmm. it's like the vocabulary of that one particular thing so like when every time like you guys have the um it's really interesting to have both of you to perform it and it's so different right because i can totally feel this is elliot's for sure and this is chloe's right and then it has its own reality has its yeah. own um landscape yeah you know created by that landscape yeah by that mm -hmm. you know amount of uh, vocabulary based on what you guys chose to mm -hmm. describe it yeah. and stuff like, it's uh, it's interesting because you know um, um, every time when I when I talk to people I can always see those those points of uh, connections and how we see things that beginning it's just a sentence right in the beginning it's just um, an idea and the more you draw the more you write into it the more you actually start to see it it's like you're going back to a dream that you, you maybe you, you forgot or something right and then finally when you're like ah uh, okay I, something like this and the more you you do it you, it comes more clear and clear and clear and like yeah. oh shit it's it's real man yeah. like you can yep. totally feel it yep. so oh my god this this uh, <laughs> podcast was so enlightening the um wow the audience is just as important as the performer though really like yeah, it's absolutely and a lot of times right. sometimes I don't I don't think I perform I probably do perform something mm -hmm. even if it's a small bit I want to focus on the hosting and not be so caught up on the performing and like sometimes, sometimes I feel dope. Other times I feel like eh, I'm okay. Like, <laughs> and so like, but I really enjoy the hosting aspect. But the every single person that comes there plays like a, a vital role. One thing that I would love is I would love to have a regular photographer um, come out. Um, I'd love to have re regular people to take videos because I'm normally hint, shooting hint, videos. Hint. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find some. I'm normally <laughs> shooting videos. You know, and taking photos as well as she is during the event. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're double tasking because we want to make sure that we have some type of archive um, to show what's what's going on. So even this is is, is a wonderful part of that. Mm -hmm. um, man, I know, like we're supposed to end and stuff, but like I like we, you know, I, I she love, performed I, and I performed and I, I want to perform again. And, so I, and I love how we're all able to connect with our different um, outlets. Artistic yeah, totally. outlets. And I love that. That's and that's, uh, for example, myself too. That I'm, I'm uh, an audience member, you mm -hmm. know, and it, it's that point of like whatever experience that I have, I can find that part of empathy, right. you know. Yeah. Right. that's that's uh, the amazing thing about empathy. That's how you're mm -hmm. going to communicate and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously, we come from different places and stuff, and different you know, uh, influence and stuff. But somehow, it's wow. Somehow, you know, it happened. Yeah. You know, we can understand each other. Yeah. So uh, let's let's end it on a high note like that. 
Okay. Whatever we're feeling, I'm sure they're going to feel the same thing. It feels... I want to perform one more piece. <laughs> do you want to perform? I do, but I, now I feel like it's unnatural and forced. <laughs> but I really you can perform do. perform for us. The force is with you. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> the force is with yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to perform it to y'all. I don't think I'm going to talk to the camera. Or maybe I should talk to the camera. I want to talk to y'all because it's weird looking at a screen and like talking to that. It's more natural for me to talk to you. Okay, guys. how about this? Well, we're here. We're your audience, right? All right. But keep in mind that there's someone else out there. All right, I'm keeping that in mind. Okay, so let me just give this to yeah. you because I feel like um, one thing is very important is to underscore um, what's going on with your life in Korea. Mm -hmm. The expat experience is very specific and unique. There's a there's a blog or a Tumblr thing called Kicking It in Korea. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, I love it. When people see it, every, people are like they can relate because they've had similar experiences. And so, I told you I don't really share a lot sometimes when I do just the uh, spoken word, mm -hmm. but I share more in the music. And so I have something. Then when I when I perform it, I feel like people can relate to it. So I want to just do a bit of that. Um, it's like um, it's like. Sleep deprived, but music revives me. My heart beats and pulses inside me, especially when I don't think highly of myself. My character, my words, my actions, fuel with the passion, am I making right choices? Stuck in my head, hearing all the wrong voices. Trapped in the tunnel, I feel like I'm funneling down, down, down. You would say, can a brother get a pound? Korea, how many friends I got around? That'll last, and when friends pass like fashion, trends each year the cycle begins again so i found connection with women spent time with several different now they're gone and i'm lost in derision the preacher was right he said i lack vision and need redemption and then the chorus is like music is my therapy when they won't hear me yeah they won't hear me music is my therapy my therapy sets me free and then um next one is like uh these days folks got so much to say she say that he just ran away Ran to Korea just to be the man, fluttering his wings just like Peter Pan, living in Neverland. Every few months, my folks ask, what's the plan? I wish I was Shaq. I just say Shazam, but I don't know, <laughs> man. Yep. I said, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. Trying to grow, man. Trying to grow, man. Trying to grow. Don't get me wrong. I'm doing my own thing, carving my own lane, stacking chips not to make it rain before a rainy day, because I don't know what awaits back home in the States. I'm good, but I could be great, but I don't want to tempt fate. But this feeling right here, dog, I just can't shake. Maybe it's just a sin in me, draining me of my energy. Faith come and replenish me, because I feel powerless, yet powerful like my plug's been pulled. The wise fool just trying to refocus his lens, and it starts right here with my pad and my pen. So, anyway. Nice. <laughs> really? Really? We're going to do that. Uh, so people should come out. We do it every second Sunday of the month. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about the date. It's every second Sunday of every yeah. single month. We're holding it down. Spoken words, soul, come out to do it. Oh, we whatever. got dope DJs too. Yeah, oh my goodness. We didn't talk about Q and yeah. um and False Face. False Face. I always think of their names they as the opposed to names. their... You guys have the best names. Like, I wish comedians had the best names, too. It's just like, coming up, Wilfred Lee. Yeah, but you, I mean, if y'all had, that would be weird. If y'all had, like, a name that was different, you know? Yeah. Like, even us, if we came out as spoken word artists and we were like, next up, we have the laser. Like, what? That'd be awesome. I would watch that. The laser. <laughs> the laser. Yo, shh. The laser's performing. <laughs> yeah, because then it seems inauthentic. Like, it's almost cool that, like, the more you don't have a name, that means it's not polished. When people are asking for spoken word, like the spoken word are the same people that want to see acoustic performances. They don't want the gloss. Mm -hmm. They want like as raw, raw as it gets. They want there to be mistakes and the microphone fall over in the middle of the performance. It's and like you you're it at out. the butcher shop and just like yeah. the pound of meat like to take it what you want. That's what people want because they feel like it's more authentic. They feel yeah. like they're really getting uh, the real deal. Absolutely. And I know that's what I feel like. I would rather sure. have like something where there's a bunch of technical mistakes but I felt like the person bared their soul mm -hmm. then something where I'm like this person could have just put this on a TV screen and we could have just watched it on the TV because I don't feel like they gave anything mm -hmm. I don't feel like they left anything on the stage mm -hmm. you know I love that uh, in um, Coming to America um, when you Eddie know, Murphy it, yeah, yeah. Um, the performance at the church you know and, and he sings and just drops the mic sexual chocolate <laughs> <laughs> like 
<laughs> he poured out. He, he, just, he just left it on the stage. Like, I just got to walk away from the stage now. I just left. That's hilarious. I just, this is me on this. And he said sexual chocolate. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Because, um, and that's, and, and, and that's, that's the last, and that's the last thing I, I will say. Because there's this, uh, there's a line that says, uh, live full, die empty. So, if if that's what we is that if that's what we could do as artists is pour out of ourselves where we feel like whatever was on the inside we mm -hmm. poured out and we left it, mm -hmm. then I feel accomplished. Absolutely. But if I feel like I have all this potential that I'm not using, that I'm not performing, I feel like I'm just being not stagnant, using my right. yeah, being stagnant when I could really be pouring out. So mm -hmm. I think every person that performs, it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter how experienced they are or how inexperienced. The fact that they are willing to go up there and share a, par a part of their life with somebody through comedy or through any other form, mm -hmm. kudos to them. Because mm -hmm. everyone else is sitting back, chilling, doing the same old thing. So anyone that picks up a microphone or decides to write, yo, keep doing your thing. That's, that's all I have to say. Absolutely. Word. So... Uh, again, you know, you guys just make sure you connect with them. They have a performance every second, second Sunday, Sunday of every month. month. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then every second Sunday of the month. And they also have a Facebook group page, Wordsmiths. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So, Wordsmiths. And the next event is coming up soon. That's my good side. And also, uh, don't forget to like our page on Facebook. We have the Artist Journey for our daily inspirational posts and motivational links and we're gonna have a couple of events coming up uh, same tune we're actually gonna build a, a website coming up soon we're gonna make sure everything is uh, all in one source and actually I'm gonna start working on having these Ustream broadcasts onto YouTube because I know this is kinda hard to find and actually watch on your mobile phone or something so hopefully I'm gonna put it on YouTube you guys can watch at any time just make sure you share and like and all this stuff and spread the word and if you guys actually feel like you ever want to say something you want to share, you know, put yourself and just spill yourself on the stage. You can join these guys and this little fellow over here at the uh, Wordsmiths. So that's it from us tonight. Thank you, thank you guys so much for thank coming. Thank you so out. much for having us. Boom! Really, really yeah. appreciate it. We had a good time, and uh, anytime you know, please come by again, and mm -hmm. we'll do it again, and okay. we'll always keep promoting Wordsmiths and just uh, thank you. sharing the truth, thank sharing you. the truth. Thank you. I like Batman. Dark chocolate. Mm, mm. Chloe? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.